And there is a, 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 a special organization that needs to be able to adapt to that. But when it comes to that big reform, I committed my crime. Yeah. I shot all four of them people. Damn. It, and it wasn't the first time. I tell people when I went to prison, that was the first time I got caught. Not the first time I had done shot somebody. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. guy in here today, he don't need no introduction. This is his second time on the show. The first one was phenomenal. I know you guys are about to enjoy this man. Boss man Brewster is in the building. Big reform. Big reform. We in the building, baby. Wow. Man, what's going on with you? Man, I'm alive. Pull it on. I'm alive, I'm free, so I'm blessed, and I'm winning. Speak right into it. Let me see some. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I want it to be clear. Man, I want you to be clear. There you go. We talking big reform business. We needs to be clear and That's accurate it. in the mic. Man, I just, like I said, the, the thing I, I love about you, man, is you never quit going. I'm going to jump right in. Man, uh, I seen you and Kiki went into the prison, and that touched me, man. <laughs> yeah, they call this Darrington unit. They call it Chocolate City. You know, everybody in the system. I, mean, Cause I was like, man, you know, I just I just seen them all that white. You see the white, you know where it's at. You know what time it is. I don't know what kind of boots they wear, but they used to get them old boots. Them old boots was horrible. Yeah, they still horrible. That's them state boots, them black boots. Man, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, man, just to, 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 to see, you know, all the stuff that goes into what, you know, uh, one would do when they come in. Because I remember people coming in, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, how did you even process being that you were locked up to be, you know, go back into the prison system? How did you how did you find out what the process was going to be? How did you do it? Uh, did you do it while you was on parole? Could, or did you have to wait till you were off parole? Uh -huh. Give us the ins and outs of how that happened. So I've never been on parole. I discharged my complete sentence. Uh, the big re the big reform movement is something that me and the conciliar, we call him the jewel dropper. I'll get into that a little later. But that's something we came up with. And we knew we wanted to impact the culture from the inside out. So I have several associates, friends, family members that's already on the inside. So that's my cheat sheet. I may I know what's going on on the inside because I communicate with these guys. So once they expose some of the importance of, hey, bro, we need to have some real rec yard sessions down here. We need some guys to come into the system that we identify with, that we relate to. That's when I knew the importance of we need to get to the to the rec yards. We need to get into the system. We need I we need individuals to be able to identify success on the level that they at. That's real. Yes, sir. That's real. And so, I mean, the one thing I can say is if you've been outside of it, and if you've been in and then you're going back in, you definitely have a recipe if you know how to stay out. How, what's the percentage of people who end up going back into prison? 76% of all inmates return back to prison within the first three years of being released. Wow. Yes, sir. 73%. 76. 76. Yes, sir. What do you think about that? That's crazy. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big, I mean, like. But why is that so? Um, a big reason it is lack of funds. Lack of funds. Individuals are committing crimes at an all time high about the funds. So I know that if you broke, the possibility of you committing a crime is extremely high. Versus if you somebody that's getting a little paper, you got some bread coming in, your thought process is going to be different, your decision making is going to be different. An individual that has zero dollars versus a person that has four or five hundred dollars, the decision making is different. Wow. Well, then what happened to those people who um, used to be out here hustling and stuff like that, making a lot of money, come back home trying to do right? But because they can't get a job and stuff like that, they go right back to the streets because, right. you know, that's where they can make their money. Right. So that's bullshit, Miss Jamaica. When they say they can't get no job, you don't mm -hmm. want no job. It, it, I'm mind blown by the amount of individuals that come home from prison. In prison, it's something called the host squad, kitchen okay. workers. You're going to break your neck to go out here to go to the kitchen. It, as a matter of fact, when they call kitchen workers out, if they if they miss you, you're going to be talking about, go get the Sarge. Go get the lieutenant, man. Really? They didn't get me for work. But uh -uh. the moment you release back into society, you go to talking about what you ain't going to do. They ain't paying me enough. Bro, you was just working for free. 
How you go from working for free to where they finna give you ten, eleven dollars and that's not enough? That's because of the mindset. That's because while you was incarcerated, you wasn't in there really getting your game up. You was watching General Hospital all day and betting on LeBron now. Mm. Wow. wow, I think that's that, that's something that you see a lot of people. They'll say a lot of things when they locked up. You know, they send uh-huh. a lot of letters home. They make a lot of promises to kids. Correct. And and you see this and and I always ask this is one of the questions I ask you like, what's the? I mean, you help people on the outside, but when you was locked up, what was the fastest you seen somebody do? Just go out and come right back. Uh, I say about six months. Six months. I don't seen dudes get out six months. They be right back. They got the same TDC number. Send them right back to the Send same them back unit. To the same unit and everything. Wow. That's because they wasn't properly per- prepared upon being released. We are. Uh, I know you've heard of the five P's. Yeah. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. If you sit inside that institution and you're not properly preparing yourself for society, that means once you get here, you're going to fall on your face and you'll be back. Wow. I got a question. So, because um, I don't know a lot about I just take from what people tell me. Uh-huh. Okay. So, when you come in out, you go to the halfway house, right? Mm-hmm. In the halfway house, they have programs where they're supposed to help you get jobs. Uh huh. So they're supposed to. Help, so is that the only thing that they have that they give you to prepare you for? As far as jobs. Jobs? Do they give you like a um, counseling session before you get out to make sure that you you're okay to come right. back to society so, and so, stuff? So so the judicial system has different programs. I work with RPD, the rehabil mm-hmm. the rehabilitation program division. Right. I work with them. So we have many different programs that are in place to assist individuals. Now, granted, you have to put forth the effort. Exactly. You know, you if you sitting there waiting on, on, on us or you waiting on the state of Texas to do something for you, you're going to be waiting forever. But if you putting forth the effort to better yourself, you putting forth the effort to get the help you need, of course it's there. But in today's time, it's too many individuals who just sitting around like they entitled or feeling like we owe you something. Even after being in prison so so long, they still feel like that. Man, you have individuals who are incarcerated. You have individuals that are free who know the rules, regulations, and policies of the prison facility and care more about the prison facility than they do about the success of themselves and their families in society. Mm. They can tell you everything that the system ain't doing, but can't tell you nothing about what they ain't doing. Wow. wow. I, I just, you know, and, and that's that's something else, man. You know, um, how many people did you see? I, I know you get this a lot that came down that really was innocent, but they and, and they got out and they wasn't even a part of what had happened. Um, I've met a few guys. You see what I'm saying? I have met a few guys who were, you know, falsely incarcerated. Correct, and, correct. You know, so those those type of cases are are taking place in our system. And there's a, 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 a special organization that needs to be able to adapt to that. But when it comes to that big reform, I committed my crime. Yeah. I shot all four of them people. Damn. It, and it wasn't the first time. I tell people when I went to prison, that was the first time I got caught. Not the first time I had done shot somebody. Yeah. I committed my crime. So, you know, my attitude about prison may not be the same as someone who's been falsely incarcerated because you do have individuals that are falsely incarcerated. You know, uh, that's an unfortunate situation. That's something that do need to be identified and addressed. And uh, from what I'm seeing, we uh, have elevated as far as with the forensic science, technology, and DNA to be able to, you know, prove the innocence or whatnot. But as far as Brewster and that big reform movement, man, we locked in on changing lives in the culture, in the streets. What I'm talking to the homies that's really putting in that work. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.